So people are plugged in digitally doing remote things. I said to you that uh, I think a lot of people are going away from trying to get employed by big companies and try to do their own things. Um, and, and, you know, software helps with that of kind of having like a, a personal stack of software that is their business. Um, so you, you made yourself an influencer in this space. And, and I know you talk about the importance of branding yourself as a person. I was thinking even as companies too, but talk, talk about the, the importance of, of branding oneself in, in a digital age. Yeah, and, and I fell into this by accident. I didn't set out to, to figure out how to do this. And I know a lot of um, people say, well, I want to be an influencer. And I've got one of my daughters said that before because she sees some of the ones on uh, online and YouTube and stuff. And, you know, it's we don't just apply for that job. It's you've got to have a voice, you've got to contribute. And as often, as there is often with... Um, artists and and you know comedians etc they they got instant success well actually no they did 15 years 20 years of the circuit before they got spotted but you just haven't seen that so i i i was contributing content writing blogs uh, speaking at events um just doing a lot of stuff and slowly got approached by different big vendors to well could you do one for us could you contribute to this could you come and speak at this event and slowly, slowly, I've ended up being uh, a thought leader and influence in the cloud computing space for a lot of major brands. But it, it, it hasn't happened overnight, right? And it, it's not something I just applied for online and, and tomorrow was was doing. But personal branding came as part of that, right? I, I slowly realized that as part of that, more people would check me out. More people would spot me online. And social media during that period became more of a must have you know everyone's on it um and different so many different platforms so one of the bits of advice i'd give to people and and now because of covid you know during covid we've seen digital transformation and online digital profile jump forward seven to eight years that's known in the industry that's how you know we we had our expectations and and predictions uh where we'd be in seven ten years and we've let forward because we've all been forced to go online, find new ways of working, et cetera. So I, what I say to people is, you, you, people say, well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not an influencer, I'm not a celebrity, I, I don't have a personal brand. Everyone has a personal brand. I mean, forget online, you have a personal brand. Personal brand is others' perception of you based on anything they have access to. So if you've met them in person and you've spoken well at a meeting, and then other people have talked about you and what you've done. The perception that people have of you from that in engagement is what they see as your personal brand, what you stand for, what you know, your value. The reality today, though, of course, is because of social media and, and what the web brings is you have the ability to, to control and create your own personal brand and go global with it very cheaply, if not free. You know, have you got a LinkedIn profile, a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, a TikTok, whatever, is anyone that can find you and anything they can see represents your personal brand. So for me and B2B, LinkedIn's an obvious one and Twitter are the two commonest platforms that people would look at me on. And I cultivate what content goes on those platforms. I make sure I look good because today the first impression is more often digital. You know, guys, we've jumped on here now. It's very easy for you to have checked me out beforehand, looked at my LinkedIn, look, search my name in Google, and you'll find stuff and make decisions based on it, based on what you can see. So positively and negatively. So here's the thing. Anyone listening to this, it, it can affect your career as well. Employers, the HR team there, the recruitment team, the recruiting manager, boy, you know, I recruit people. So I advise people on this. Um, we can check you out in seconds. You know, you apply for a job. I can search, even if you haven't, you haven't put the web address in, you haven't put your Facebook profile on there. Yeah, well, I've got your name. I know where you live. I know where you worked previously because it's on your CV. So I just whack it into Google and it does the work for me. And your social profiles, because based on the, based on the, the indexing, more often than not, your Facebook profile, your LinkedIn, your social profiles are going to be at the top because they get high rankings naturally based on those platforms. So I'm going to find you. It doesn't take much. And if you've left your Facebook profile wide open with all your college parties and stuff on it, you can argue, 
well, that's my right to, right? Yeah, but I can see that. And you don't know what I've looked at. And, and, and don't give me the comment that, well, it's never affected me. You don't know. You don't know, right? If you didn't get shortlisted for a job, you don't know the hiring manager didn't see more pictures of you drunk and partying and make that judgment, you know, incorrectly by all means. But if that's the perception they've got, that was your personal brand in their mind. You can argue it's wrong, but they won't tell you. You'll never know. And it's done its damage. So simple things are, if you've got stuff out there, limit it, you know, and limit it to who you want to see it. Control your personal brand and make yourself look good online because it, it's your personal brand. When you move job to job, it's yours. You know, get good stuff on there. And, and the stuff that you, you may not want an employer to see or a potential employer, just turn it off so your friend, only your friends and family and, and connected people can see it. In which case, it can't do damage, but the people you want to see it still can. There you go. It's a couple of clicks. You just think about it. This is, I talk about this in the business world a lot, and it, it's other people like me who's, who, who speak on this. We, we're all aghast often at what people, people who don't realize and don't take note of this and what they allow to happen to their own you know, profile and, and allow people to see. Yeah. In in your case, especially I mean, coming from like a podcast host perspective, super curated on LinkedIn, super easy things to, to you know, a title to talk about you. Uh, you got 29 experiences that are posted on there. Um, so I could, I could, it's a very deliberate, you know, branding indeed of, of yourself online. Thank you. The beauty of it is right, guys, it, it brings you opportunity. It brings you opportunity in jobs and other things, you know, cultivate. You, you've all got expertise and experience, no matter how young you are. You've got innovation. You've got ideas. You can represent yourself. That's the beauty that we all live in now. You want to create a blog, you can go and post on LinkedIn. You don't even have to know how to, how to blog or you don't have to use WordPress. You can go and just create a, an article on LinkedIn and it's a blog against your own profile. If you've got some value to give, Put it out there. You don't know. That's how it happened to me, right? I talked about things that I knew and understood um, and experiences I was having in my, in my job and data industry. And then big brands started reaching out to me. said, could, 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 could you write something like, something like that for us? We really enjoyed we, we spotted you doing this. And then they published me on their page. And guess what? Then someone else spots it. You create this snowball effect of opportunity where virtually every week now I get invited to be on a, a panel or... Could, could you come and speak at this event or could you come, could we fly you out to, out to Barcelona and, you know, speak at the SAP big customer event and interview a customer for us and do, you know, they'll find you. You, you want to create your own opportunity. It, it's out there if you want to do it. Do you think it's dangerous to have no online presence at all? Yeah, I do. And, and unless you, you're working in an environment which that's appropriate for, right? So I always say, you know, to my hairdresser, not, not that I've got much hair to worry about styling, but, um, you know, the internet, I always joke to them, how's the internet going to affect them? But do you know what? COVID, they have changed their model and, and, and now you, they have an online booking system and it manages it and they've got queues and they market themselves better online, but they, but their product won't be replaced, right? You, you've still got to go and physically get your hair cut. You, there's no way of digitizing that. But what they have done is use digitization to reach out to more customers and et cetera. But yeah, I, I think it is dangerous not to be online. And if you're, if you're going to work in a secure environment in the government, they probably don't want you to be online and turn all your profiles off. Yeah. So there are certain exceptions that always are. Right? I never say one, one size fits all. But in the majority of cases, it, it's more positive opportunity for being uh, managing your online brand than just turning it off and having nothing. 